One of the things I like very best about Painter is my ability to create some custom palettes and speed up my workflow. I will create new palettes really for almost any new project I work on so that I'm not constantly digging through menus to find something I might need. It just makes working much quicker and much easier when you do this. It's very, very easy to do, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to start and continue to do. So the first thing I will do is I've got a brush selected, and it's usually with brushes that I start this, and I will hold the shift key, click on the brush, and drag it off. And you can see I've got a little ghost image right now. When I let up, I've automatically created a new palette called Custom 5, and I've also created a new palette drawer. And I'm going to rename it Junk Drawer, because I usually have a junk drawer with all sorts of things I need in it. So, of course, it would make a lot of sense if it was for a specific project or something. You might do that instead of just calling it Junk Drawer. But I think for this, it will be fine. Decide whether you want large icons or small icons. I tend to use smaller icons, because especially with brushes, I will right-click on it. And I'll use a text view. That works a little better for me knowing which brush I'm picking than it does using the icon view or the stroke view. And I like the small icons a little bit better because I can arrange them in a little tighter sequence. This can be resized. If you accidentally hold the shift key and grab something on that you don't want, simply hold the shift key again and you can drag it off. If you don't have a second brush on here, though, you will lose the whole palette. So what you can do, you don't even have to have it actually selected initially. But you can come in and just for example, I'll pick some of these. Hold the Shift key and drag it onto here. Move around. Hold the Shift key, drag it onto here. So you can load it up if you kind of know what you're going to be using. You can build a palette really quick of brushes that you want to be using. I'm getting just a few of these on here, for example. And it, it saves a little time instead of loading each of them just to do it here. So I'm filling this up, and it appears that I'm going to run out of space pretty quick, but that's not a big deal because you can always come back in and move them around. Okay, so I've got this many brushes right now. They're all still in the stroke view, so I want to come in, change them to the text view. So I right click, text view, right click. Text view. I do a lot of this using a mouse, just because it's easier all the right clicking and stuff with a mouse, I think. Okay, so here are all of my brushes. Now, for example, I didn't put any erasers or blenders on here, and I really should. So let me grab a couple of blenders. So again, I'm holding the shift key. And let me get some erasers. What I'll try to do is in this palette, I will try to keep these things kind of arranged in logical groups. So erasers I'll keep all in the same area. Sending them to text view again. Right clicking, text view, right clicking, text view. Now this kind of got in here positioned poorly. Hold down my shift and I'll just drag it over. And I can really arrange these any way I want. So I might stick all my regular kind of brushes or favorite brushes in one area. A lot of this will depend on how much room you have that you want to use. In another area, I might stick all my blenders, and next to it, I might stick all my erasers. So now I'm getting a pretty organized arrangement of brushes. You can, of course, resize it however you need it. If you don't want to use one of these brushes, so say I don't like this one, hold shift drag it off, and it just goes away. So now I will come back up under Window here, and I'll start to increase how I'm organizing it. So I've got a few created. Custom 5 is the one I'm working on right now. What I want to do, click on the Organizer, Custom 5, and I'm going to rename it Brushes because this has brushes on it. So now this palette in this drunk drawer is called Brushes. Now I'm going to add some paper textures. Same kind of thing. I will use a number of paper textures in any project, but I don't want to have to constantly be opening menus and media panels to find them. 
I can add them on a palette. So I will drag off this one here, all the shift key, drag it off. See, it creates a new palette. You can add any number of papers onto this. And these one I just leave as the icons because they're understandable to me. So I'll drag a few of these off. And I can bring this actually up in. And now I've added a second palette into my junk drawer. I'm going to rename it real quick. So custom palette, organizer, this I want to rename it papers and maybe materials. Here it is. So there are brushes I'm going to use, papers right now I'm going to use. I'm going to bring up another media panel and let's go ahead and try patterns palettes and the libraries. You can drag these holding down the shift key. And drag these over onto your custom palette. That's why I named it Papers and Materials. And if you want to get rid of one, go ahead and drag it off. Let's go ahead and add another one with media panels. And let's go ahead and try gradients. Hold down the shift but you can virtually add any of these things you want. So let's bring in another media panel, textures, just shift and drag them all on. This just to me makes it easier if I'm working with the same materials on the same image constantly to arrange this kind of at the bottom of my screen and I can click through it and pick whatever I want. You can also add commands. So for example, I will often put a lot of the layer commands and make it a little easier to access them. To do that, I'll come up in the window, custom palette, add command. And I'm going to go ahead and add this into a new one right now. And what I do is now select from the menus what I want to add. So in layers, let's go new layer. New layer, add. And you can see a new palette has been created and new layer has been added to that palette. Do this again. Window, custom palette, add command. Now we don't want to add it to a new layer this time, so let's pick custom 7. And we need to pick the menu item, so this is going to be again layers. So let's pick duplicate layer there and we'll add it to 7. Click Add. And we can continue doing this. So I'll pick another, select all layers, Add, and I'll add a couple other things so that you can see how this works. For the sake of example, I'm going to add a couple other things. So let's select all, Add. Let's go Invert Selection, Add. And let's go and add a couple of effects. So tonal control, correct colors, add, go to effects, esoterica, bly marbling, add. You can virtually add any kind of menu item you can find to a new menu. When you're done, click OK. I want to come up into window, organizer, number seven, I want to rename it. So I'll just rename it layers. Click OK. Done. And I will drag this. And now I've added it to my junk drawer here. When you've got this built, the nice thing is you can come back under here again, Custom Palette, Organizer. Select the one you want. Any of these. I can export it as a palette or I can save it as a box, which will save it with more information. You can see the difference in a box and export palette here. Then you could load it into Painter anywhere else. Really powerful. I really like using this for speeding up my workflow process. Give it a try, creating some of your own personal and individual junk drawers or whatever you want to name them. Uh, I think you'll find it valuable, easy to do in Painter.